Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in a Culture, where we bring to you creative disruptors that we feel like you should know. So here's our plea. Like, share, subscribe this episode. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. That helps us get valuable data that helps our channel grow and bring you more amazing guests and content. If you're listening to us on a streaming platform, a pod platform, follow the show. Doesn't hurt anything. Just follow us so then we can bring you more of the great things that we already bring you. This week, we have a very, very special guest. And um, since this is like Josh's initial connection, I'm going to have Josh do the introduction. Absolutely. So this week's guest, I had the pleasure of meeting at the IF Lab through our, our mutual friend Taib, who introduced us. And Taib spoke so highly of him. He let us, well, he let me know that he would be a, a major change maker in the Philadelphia community, specifically the gaming community. And hearing those words, knowing the gamer that I am, I had to make sure I stayed in touch with my, my homie Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is the CEO of Jump Button Studio. So they basically are an animation and video game studio that works with different uh, organizations, usually production studios, to create games for them. And his story is absolutely amazing. I cannot wait till you guys get to learn more about Nicodemus. So Nicodemus, without further ado, welcome to Disruptors in the Culture, man. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's I feel like this is long overdue. I feel like I've, we've been talking about this for years now, and then we, we get you here, and it's like it's actually happening. Yeah, this is, I think, my second ever podcast so okay. far. That's pretty dope. Now, I, I can say one thing. Taib Smith is like a big brother and mentor to me, and um, Tony as well, and then by extension, Josh. If he speaks highly of someone, they really, really doing some big things, and they're really, Taib respects a brilliant mind and great execution. So if he's telling Josh that you're someone to know and to keep eyes on, that means you're doing some amazing things. So you guys met through Taib's recommendation. So Josh, why is it? Because that was two years ago. Yeah. I believe when y'all were filming old head. Why is it taking yeah. this long for you to bring him to the show, bro? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. I was like, yeah, so we started filming old head. We stopped doing the podcast. <laughs> I know we had, well, you and I, Nicodemus, had connected about a, a few different things in between and, um, you know, just catching up with each other. But I, I think as soon as we started planning out season three, I was like, we have to get him on the show. I was like, it's, it's such a, well, you, I believe Nicodemus have such a unique position being a, black person within the space of gaming you know not only that you're the ceo of a company and you've literally started this company from scratch so there's not many people who can who have done that in your space in your time and your age it's it's incredible so like I, I i couldn't miss the opportunity to talk to you about you know unpacking that and developing that and e even with that man i i wanted to give you the floor to talk about you know just where did it all start so i know we we can fast forward a little bit to um you know part of college but even if it started before then where did this love for gaming start and then how did it develop into where we are now definitely definitely oh man first and foremost T, he is definitely an individual i feel you either love or hate and those who love him understand the value he adds to everything you're building so i've always that's why i've always gotten every time i said he is my mentor um and certain reactions but he's done so much um in my growth um so where it all started for me in particular and i'm a co-founder so there are two other co-founders with me um calvert and daniel as well as a former co-founder mike uh not mike matthew um but it took a good amount of village that is still growing to kind of get to this point um I wanted to make sure also shared that. So began for me, 2004, I would have to say, um, immigrated here to America from Minerva, Liberia, and young black kid, right, with a heavy accent. Before I used to say horrible accent until a good friend of mine, Jay Ann, um, and somebody that she worked with, like shared with me how that could come off 
in a negative light in the sense of how like I might not be perceiving it and that I'm not saying the accent is horrible, but that it was heavy and people could not understand me clearly. But let me also share that insight. I was, it was an interesting thing that I never thought about in a way I referenced how I felt. But yeah, bad style as well. So I don't know what the dress game is like, you know, <laughs> and most of my outfits were baggy. And back then, you, uh, I think it was referred to as high wooders. Um, so going through, you know, a lot of unique experiences as a new individual, black person, young, in a new country, trying to make that first friend or first connection. I could not do that outside of my home. Um, at least then, you know, I couldn't imagine it. So I found myself very engaged with either putting puzzles together. Um, I remember my church, they had gifted me my first birthday, my first gift ever here in the U.S. It was a train set that you had to put together and then it would like go by itself with the remote controls you could use. And then I found a computer and made my first friend playing the game. And that friend happened to live right around the corner from me over near Walsh Road. And we're still friends, but a lot of, you know, life things happened that kind of put us in different, different worlds. But that experience going through it and recognizing I could not replicate that outside of my home at the time, because how well are you going to hear me if I'm trying to talk to you? Or how, like, how am I going to be able to make sure we're on the same, like, we're mutually understanding what I'm saying and we can align on something and create that bond. And games did that. I mean, it didn't really take much effort. So going through that experience just immediately imprinted on me games. Fast forward a year, continued my gaming journey, playing this game called RuneScape. That was the game in which I made that first friend. I can't Pokemon is the other game throughout that journey in history where I just recently shared with Josh how um since financially, you know, uh it was my parents' money I was surviving through. I I would buy the Game Boys just to play in the new Pokemon game and then return it until the next one came and then go purchase the game again and repeat that process. Um it was only up for Pokemon. So those are like what I grew up on. Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Runescape. So fast forward to high school, preparing for college. But it also kind of started sparking in middle school where I found myself on like online forums, gaming forums, you name it. Looking at game engines, finding community. And that's where Jump Button was kind of sparked. But it was originally, I was trying to intern for a lot of creative companies that fell within the entertainment world and or with Touch Gaming that was either local or Cali. <laughs> and they all quickly, you know, I was informed, like I quickly understood back then just how much was blocked from you until you entered college. And my whole intention for wanting to do internships was to avoid the amount of debt I could get into when I get to college, right? Because I heard enough horror stories and the amount of gaming was not my real career I would actually love. And I went to college for that. Now I have to change my major. And that's added debt and things of that nature. So I was trying to avoid that. But through, you know, everything I was going through with jump, like the forming, soft forming of jump button, across uh, middle and high school entrepreneurship found me and my co-founders and because I was heavily involved in a lot of impact social impact driven things service learning etc in my school new foundation starter high school I always just trying to find what how how can I leave what we are trying to touch better than we found it and that has always been the core of the things we think about and try to accomplish um, and 
jump button, the imagination, like trying to reimagine diversity and inclusion. But before we made it to that point, it was just a bunch of kids and young adults trying to figure out where and what they could add to a space that's within technology. Since we were making apps, we're making games, and we're making animations during those periods as we were concepting what Jump Button is meant to be. But yeah, that's how it all began. So when end. you when you made your first like app or game, how old were you? That is a great question. When we first made our when we made our first app, me personally, I was anywhere around 18 to 21 22 within that range and so it was something that like right away you took to market like how did like so it went from a love into you knowing this is what i want to do like when was it that what age were you when you were like i know i guess it was middle school you said mm -hmm. like when you said like i know i want to make games i want to do animation then wow but the actual business behind it. So had you made stuff that you didn't like take to market before then? Yeah, we made a lot of things that didn't go to market before yeah. then. Actually, it was a lot of game jams and experimental stuff. And then our first few games were on mobile, Google Play, Apple App Store. It was Rainbow Hippie, Last Line Retreat, Afro Smash. Had several things that we were just putting out there and trying to just figure out how we can truly be in this space and add value on top of quality. So when you were 18, put out your first app, were you in college or, and then what? I think yeah, I was in high school. The, this okay. whole, yeah, I was in high school, like the later, like senior, senior year, high school and preparing for college um, type of ordeal. Because that's it was around that time that we were honored at the White House during Obama presidency for our impact driven stuff. Yeah, so it was high school senior. Wait, so was the high school <laughs> honored, or were was like was we, Jump Button already jump button. created and the name was already existing? Yep, yep. That was the unofficial years, right? We officially legally registered in 2015 and unofficially in 20 like 2011 is when our whole journey of things began let's 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 take a step back because i don't want to yeah. glaze over yeah. the white house visit yeah. like it was nothing <laughs> it's, that's like one of those so, things you hear like subtle flex and then they're gonna Barack keep going. obama know who you are man he had to pick our names on the list um, but this was through the government component of gaming esa entertainment software association it was through their efforts and the like mission they're on to ensure as many people have access to what the future of games looked like so it was a program they were doing that we had won and had the opportunity to kind of set foot in those uh two wings yeah it was fun it was a good journey. That's got to be that's got to be like early reassurance for you. Like you, your first, you put out your first few games, and next thing you know, you're at the White House meeting and Barack Obama, and everything's going good. And that 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 sounds like for people who are on their creative or entrepreneurial journey, having an early stamp like that is major. Like, how did that make you feel? Like, how did that knowing that you were going to continue this and make this what you wanted to do? How did that you know, inspire you? First clarity. Obama was not able to be there, but uh. Joe, we did get to see Joe on the way out. Um, but what's it called? It was, it was, it's, I think part of the reason it's easy to kind of, for people to forget it took a journey. It was like an overnight thing for me. It, that's never going to be possible to like ever accept the headline that like makes it seems like it was, it was an overnight success or for me to ever try to portray such a thing. It's been a journey to make it to this point. And it's because of those moments and glimpse in 
progress that we push towards that just continues to spark that continued motivation and especially at younger age right um I have no idea what my future is like. I'm still about, I'm about to leave high school, enter college. What's that family that's telling me? Hey, are you gonna focus on actual careers and things like like? So you know that whole it was. Yeah, those moments always you know spark that every motivation, and you are building something that there's a need for, and a lot of people get it. You just have to make it happen. I was literally about to ask about your family. Like, were they, were, were their thoughts about you and gaming before? And you're like, like, look, we're building something. And then here comes the White House. Were they like, did, was there a change in energy before and after the White House invited you guys? Definitely. I think that was the starting point and moment in which they started to relax more and not try to influence any specific agendas or course of life on me. Um, yeah. It, because I, that is the first time I've been, you know, asked that form of question. So I, I'm just realizing that, that is, that's actually when that is coming to me in a sense. Yeah. Because I always, you know, I always hear about them first generation African parents. They be <laughs> like, you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, engineer is like a newer path that they're into, that they're just like, what you doing? <laughs> and so I figured, I said, they probably were like, what? Were you playing games? And then the White House, and they're like, we always believed in you, Nicodemus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so then after the White House, I'm guessing you guys probably saw an influx of like early, I guess probably like the website probably started getting more hits. Did you guys start seeing more, a whole lot more traction after that? 100%. Um think that's what sparked our first few articles um especially being in high school and in this at the time as well and yeah definitely sparked a lot of eyes in the mm -hmm. beginning oh what's what's happening there and yeah. we 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 kept it rolling so how and did that transition happen for you so like now you're transitioning to college your first year and like we had talked about earlier like you're going to your first year you're seeing this traction this influx you've got a decision to make are you going to continue on the traditional path or are you going to go start something new what the what what was that like what did that feel like yeah it was interesting i know i went to um And in that year, I took a major in IT, minor in business, or IST, and minor in business. But I also was part of the ROTC while also trying to run a company. In another life, I would have been in the military. I always say that. everything started to kind of collide and then i started recognizing in college i'm there that first year they're, they're reteaching me everything i ever i already know in these spaces and i'm about to go in debt <laughs> and then the business is starting to feel like a lot more is happening and if i don't go all in in that moment i am going to find myself in year two of college with a much higher debt and probably feel more responsible to finish it than I'd like to feel. So the decision to me became clear in that I had to go all in and see where things led. Parents weren't for it, even though things like so far it was a lot. It was a lot of success and traction, but a lot of those bets for me then were in the relationship side, then the revenue side. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of why. And to me, now, you know, knowing what I know, uh, it's interesting always 
Yeah, no, I'm just, I, this is probably for a future question you may or may not ask. But to answer the question, that transition, you know, in that year, that that was, yeah, that was the moment when, when everything started to collide. I had to step back and just choose. This is this is the place I want to make the most impact. And I see leaving the most generational wealth for other people and myself. Do you regret not finishing school? So you never went back? No. No. And I always tell myself the next time I go back is going to be because they are trying to pay me to come and complete that education there. Otherwise, it's going to be because I just want to get the paper to prove I could get it if I wanted to. But I, this is not to say do not complete your education or journey, <laughs> anyone. <Yeah. laughs> Everybody has a different path. Um, for me so far, my I've learned so much more um, being in the fire and trial and error than I feel like I was going to get during, the, during that time. I it's think for you, it's a unique experience too. Like you were in the fire early. So you're <laughs> talking about you're in the fire, middle school, high school, like at that point, you forged a couple of weapons, like you're, you got some <laughs> tools already. <laughs> so then you go into your first year of college, they're already teaching you what you already know. It's like, listen, I could, I could squeeze by this, you know, I could squeeze by this. I and mean, I think that's, that's it's a testament to like your character. You had something special. I'm not saying. You acknowledge that, and it takes a lot of heart to say, <clears throat> "I'm going to pursue that," rather than you know going to the f finishing school when I'm I'm just acquiring more tools that I already have. You know, I'm going to take what I got. I'm going to go to battle with what I have or, or, of me right now and see how it goes. And it went well. You know, it it started off going well. I think that's a um, that's like the I think unifies with a lot of tech founders. They usually don't finish school because you get there and then you. I don't, I can't say that a lot of professors haven't been founders themselves, but it seems like a lot haven't. So that's kind of where you guys, like you said, you're teaching. Oh, it reminds me of, um, Idris Sandu and his studio. And he was talking about how he was there and he had been learning this stuff that they were teaching like so long before. And he's like, this is outdated. Like, what are they? And then it's just like, you got to go on, on your own, but whether it's Zuckerberg, most of them, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think Jack Dorsey finished. I don't know. As most have not, yeah. they just, <laughs> you know. And one of the things I've learned in the film world myself is that, like, I, I wish I would have, like, if, if I could give myself one piece of advice, like middle school, high school, Josh, it was like, just lean into it, pick up the camera and shoot. Because the only thing you learn, like to your point, is like by doing it, you get those reps in, you become better. Because once the stuff that I learned in college and the stuff that I learned in high school. And the stuff that I'm doing now, I was like, if I would have just started shooting earlier and done my stuff, I wouldn't have needed any of that. That debt, like you said, the debt could have gone somewhere else. <laughs> I could have put that toward a camera. You know what I'm saying? Like things like that. So, but I, I think you got a lot of good points with that. So, so, so tell us a little bit more about like now you fully committed to, to building this company out and really creating it. What's your first step? Like, where do you, where do you go? Did you guys come together and say, Hey, we're putting a stamp on this. Or, what, was there any programs you were trying to get into? What did that look like? Yeah, the first step was like where, where is where? Um, our first major check and project was with Temple University, and it was an animation gig, right? And that was also our first instance of walking into a room that didn't have an inclusive table. Right, but Temple is an amazing partner. I love them. They have done so much with us and for us. So this is not this like this is part of that experience working through and working to that, you know. And that was eye opening for me because I intend to be in a lot of rooms in which discussions are being had and I would hope to see a different set of table, you know, a different set of table. And so that led to me like diving and our team diving deeper into what the stats and the workforce looked like um, for games. And back then it was less than 2% of diverse, was it less than 2% diverse workforce. And then now it's less than 4%, but that took 
over two, three decades for it to go 2% up, you know? Um, so like from that moment when we first kind of set our eyes on inclusivity and went through the trials and errors of building apps for people, realizing many people who have ideas for an app more likely do not know the entire breadth of that concept. And we find ourselves having to think more about their own product than they did or do. And with my focus being heavily on relationship building, over time, it became a huge burn, you know? So after apps, animations, games, we decided apps is not the way to go. And to ensure, again, the service and value we add to people's agendas. And again, we are also impact focused and value driven. We decided to step away from apps and strictly focus on games and animation and that reimagination of what inclusivity looks like in this space, starting with our people and the teams we build and put together. So since, you know, that understanding as a group and then trying to figure out how to put our best foot forward, that's where the programs, the accelerators, the many, many pitch deck revisions came in. And I, in all those years, I, I like, I think just this week, we made the first pitch deck I personally can say speaks to us and the business, right? And it's been so many years of different pitch decks, but that was a tangent. Um, which is going through all of those motions and starting to recognize and see what ecosystem Philadelphia offers compared to the other areas we've been to um, throughout that journey. And yeah, that's, it's, that's how everything kind of, how we started figuring it out, games and animation. There's no game in today's age or 99.9% .9 of games in today's age has some form of animation. You can't mm -hmm. get away from that, right? And we're seeing the transformation of how movies are bleeding into games and games are bleeding into movies, right? And it's, we envision all of this happening then when we were deciding and determining what two mediums we had to tell the best stories in without having to externally hire out to tell those stories. Because then, like, how do we ensure the inclusion we're speaking to is maintained across the teams we work with and the audience we hope to impact? So it was a lot of trying to get that and figure that out. And again, it wasn't until just this year that all of that clicked for me in the form that I can speak to it as I do now. So <laughs> that's been the journey. It's, it takes a long time um, having that marketing background. It takes a long time to distill what you do down enough to be able to say it like very fast and to give, like you said, a pitch that that's not, you know, because sometimes you'll, you'll be thinking of like the service you're offering, but then you forget 18 things that you, that also come along with it. And I could imagine like when you're talking about like doing apps for people, I already know why y'all left because people were difficult and they were cheap because people thought that anyone could make an app. I remember that time and they would say, oh, I know these people and they just do this and that. And I used to just say, you know, that's just a mobile website, right? That's not an app. <laughs> like you're just going to tabs. That's it. And it's just, so I could imagine, I'm like, ooh. Yeah. And I remember that time period. Philly was cheap. Ooh. <laughs> and they didn't really believe it's just like, no, it's not that difficult. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the way yeah. technology has grown. But you make a um a really great point about like movies and animation and games. Cause I mean, I grew up I I mean, I'm 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 older. So it's like I remember when Atari um 
when it transitioned over and it's like Atari was dead, not dead, but it was like, oh, Nintendo came out like the very first NES. And but even back then we had the Predator video game based off of the movie. And, you know, a lot of games started coming from the movies, Nightmare on Elm Street games and a lot of those things. And it's just it's never going to stop. Because then you have games like Assassin's Creed, who then went to the big screen. And it's this like it's such a huge relationship of how to monetize a film and keep it going, but also a video game. And are people yeah. want deeper in the storyline and keeping it going that way? And you can imagine why it's very important that more games start to have that inclusion because the catalog to stories to tell like transform into film because i say this once i've dominated not i but we jump button once we've dominated what we can in the game space and made the impact we're trying to make my next industry is film and come on down and talk to me (laughs) (laughs) and it's to ensure when like those conversions from games to films are happening, the stories are being told are not missing out on so many, the larger audience that is consuming the space. Because right now it will, if that, if that focus were to happen, you know, but yeah, what you said is a hundred percent on the mark. So that's a big way of how, because, okay. So there aren't that many black video game studio owners. Do you know at others? I do. And it's been in the last two years that I've, out of the, since 011, 2011, that, <laughs> that I've like come to recognize there's okay. But that like the number of other studios I know that has majority black ownership uh, I can count them on my fingers at the moment, right? That I directly know. So it's, yeah, I recently started using the term diverse owned for our, for how we reference our, um, what we're trying to do. Yeah. In this I like space. That. You know, I had a question when you, you were saying before it was like less than 2% mm-hmm. diverse owned. When you say diverse owned, who is for it not to be diverse? Were we talking white male owned or are we talking because I know like a lot of times in tech, it's usually Asian male and white male for the most part. So we're talking diversity. Are we including like Asian led companies as well in it or? For me, how and the inclusion we speak to it's not necessarily an effort or just a singular effort to increase any one ethnic group and their stance in the space and or access in the space as much as it is to empower every product and project and audience that we're trying to reach with the ability to see their self represented on the team that was responsible for building that product. I can't, I'm not sure on the ownership um, breakout in regards to what would make it less, you know, diverse. But I do know majority of the AAA, the large companies currently that own the large shares of the industry are not from diverse backgrounds. Diverse backgrounds in the sense of it's missing your black ownership of a good degree. It's missing your Latino, Latinx, Hispanic ownership of a high degree. And your Native Americans, indigenous of a high degree. Until each of those areas collectively match and represent on the ownership side, the game space. My, my goal is to continue driving that those numbers forward. 
yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. And it looks like what and how we try to approach it to ensure nobody, you know, feels excluded Yeah, has been very intentional. And it's been a trial and error, you know, try and error of our internal culture, how we work, how we tell stories, how we combat each other and what we feel is the appropriate story. Yeah. And one of the trailers we recently worked on, we had a scene where we had a black character running away from the cops. And another member of our team had voiced how that would continue to, you know, add in or reflect how people currently reflect um, on negative scenes that involve uh, stereotypical, like, responses yeah. to yeah. what's like yeah you know, how and we're like okay okay we can make this more cozy yeah. <laughs> and then we brought it down to you know it was just a karen <laughs> 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 so it's those being able to have those types of conversations as a team and you know be able to reflect and improve in what we build and being like replicate that and have other people see that and how it should be and how teams should look collectively when building games that are meant to be played by as many audiences as possible in this space. So we, we know that you were inspired. I mean, you were a gamer. It came out of finding, trying to find community um, and connect with people. Um, and then, you know, early success. People are going to, people, for the most part, when they, with disruptors in the culture, people want to know the how, right? Having Jump Button Studio, running it, but also taking the, a game idea from concept to completion. Like, what does that look like in the middle of like running your studio? Like people would say, like, if it was like the younger you from way back, because I mean, you was doing it for so long, but like really young you. But how would you, if you were to say, listen, young Nick, this is how you're going to do this. What steps would you tell him to like create the studio and then get the game from start to completion? Man. If it was like a quick and, a quick and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, uh, we recently filled out an application that asked what tell us about your team and the experience and why you like to work together and we started that off by saying team and the synergy and cohesion within that team takes precedent over any idea i think i'll lean there and that is taken quite the time to scout the right individuals, find the right co team cohesion, trial and error, and utilize that to always put a better foot forward than counterparts that we observe. Um, start to finish for us starts with the team. And making sure we can get that right because we've often had that wrong in which the impact to the idea and product ends up getting the most damage out of the entire process. And that impacts the studio, which impacts what next opportunities could be. So team first. And then together, figuring out what that idea is and what the why becomes, and then tying all of that into impact. Is this really, is this is about to change somebody's life in some way, shape or form? Yes or no. 
if it's a no, more often than not, I have zero interest in it at CEO level. You mean like in a, like a game idea? Correct. Game idea or animation. Or to make sure of the two. Um, and then from there, once we've determined what that it is, what are the visuals? As what's the story? What's the narrative? What is our timeline? What is the type of funding we're going to be needing? Everything else that comes into the same process of trying to bring a film to life, uh, trying to get your next drug approved, what have you, making sure all of our T's and I forget what the saying is, but making sure everything, <laughs> everything is outlined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and going with that process, but more often than not, we need to always adjust the timeline, adjust the iteration because we learned this won't work primarily because we worked often in mobile. Back then, up to now, the mobile technology was still not as strong as your console and PC. So graphics, visually, and things of that nature, it was much more <laughs> annoying to get right and make work well um, than it is now. So just going through all of that, all of those motions consistently, repeatedly, and then finding game jams to participate in. And just make what is a game jam? Sorry, I know you referenced it before too. Just what is a game jam? Definitely, a game jam is sometimes it's like a organized event, and other times it's maybe a group of folks just having fun. But you spend an X amount of time where, from start to finish, you complete a product. That product being a game, right? And sometimes there are no breaks or sleep in between and it's just go 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 other times it's you sleep at night but you wake up miserably late and get back to it but not miserably in the sense that you hate it yeah love um creatives we creatives love sometimes the ability to iterate quickly to get to that what is this product we can make and that's, that's how I kind of, from a personal, if I had to, my view of how game gems are and what they are. So this is kind of like a jam session for musicians. Like you're all coming together to create and work the kinks out of something or, and also just free, like freestyle creation. So, okay. But if you do a game jam, because my next question was going to be around like the intellectual property of the game. And when do you come into the point of like, okay, now it's time to protect it. But if you're doing a game jam and you have people who aren't employees of Jump Button Studio, do they end up, because they were there helping work on the product, do they end up getting like some of the IP, they get equity, they get, like what happens there? So on my end for the game jams, if we find and capture a product through that, whomever or whichever team that was responsible for that initial conceptualization, the goal is to always rev share. But of course it's within an X time frame post launch in which they are not only seeing the benefit of working on it, but thereafter for having that amazing idea. But often times we've always just left and kept everything to the studio because we've always collectively, no one individual sparked the entirety of a product we ended up landing on. It was always a team effort. So the company ended up having more ownership in most products and projects that we've kind of conceptualized across the years but some of those never left the doors you know mm -hmm. it yeah. was a learning learning uh, experience and just growth period to be ready for the next product that 
is meant to go out the door, right? And has the higher or highest potential to leave some type of value in some gamer's life in some way, shape, or form. So those are, I think, what I'm kind of excited about to be able to hopefully show at the world soon what we've been working on. Um, So even within that, so can you, if you were to, again, talking to your younger you, if you could say like, hey, master these three tools, and it could be software tools, it could be just like skills, what three things, because I think you mentioned this a little bit before, like you're kind of just finding, you know, a group that it can, can work collectively, but what three things would you say, hey, like uh, master these tools and it'll lead to success? I'm making decisions quicker. There were periods in which I did not trust my own, my leadership, not trust as in like, I didn't trust them, but in that instead of acting on recommended paths, because I had so many different paths or so many paths to kind of navigate through, instead of immediately just you are the individual I picked and selected to be in this leadership position instead of just, you know, going with some of the outlined approaches they recommended and trying or trying to experiment with certain avenues first. Yeah, I would say making decisions faster so that, you know, you can iterate much faster and see the results of things versus not and then AR mm. I'd want to I would want to have jumped into AR sooner than we did and or uh, encourage my younger self to keep a higher tab on that world because I am a thousand percent certain the future is AR, MR, XR, people, we will get to a point where the glasses we wear for fun and fashion are doing much more than just seeing. Being a leader in that space earlier would be very beneficial and or just understanding that space in the depth that it's going to build and grow into. So I'll put down my radar and tool toolkit much sooner. Which funny enough, um Niantic, the company beyond Pokemon Go is one of the investors in our company mm. because our most recent pivoted vision addition to our impact has been to redefine games that are fun to play at home and away from home. And that's something I'm very excited about now, you know, that I've learned and worked towards that toolkit, but many years later than I could have. And then the last bit would be advisors, mentors, EA, executive assistant. Mm. In the last year, not last year, in the last half, like this year, this year. Since getting one, I have gotten so much more time back during a very, like, tough, like, this is the toughest year of our company's, current, like, existence so far. Um, and observing what's been like i we sold out our gaming event with the city phl gaming um that was that wasn't me <laughs> in any way shape or form that was all my ea right and though you know the company is kind of receiving some of that recognition in partnership with council member isaiah thomas's office and the great work and commitment they're making in this space there were so many things I was able to accomplish and do and kind of you know, push through because of these plug points. I 
fortunately have now, but my younger self didn't know advisors were a thing, mentors were a thing, an executive coach was a thing, executive assistants were actually very helpful and <laughs> things of that nature, right? So those would be the three three things I would empower younger me with um, if I could earlier on. So I'm, I'm going to say this. I was going to say this on or off the podcast. If you ever decide to step into AR, VR, movie making, like it's on my list of what I want to do. I want to make an AR, VR movie at some point. But like, oh, it's like I, hopefully, if you don't pass the line, I would love to, to work on that with y'all. I will keep that in my list of wish, wish list as well. Because yes. that would be dope. That'd be very dope. That'd be very dope. So one of the things you just mentioned, you guys had an event with the um, the, the city of Philadelphia. What, one, can you shed a little bit more light on that event really quickly? And then two, how can the community, how can Philadelphia get more involved with your studio? Definitely. Um, this is the city, my, the collective body of gamers, game developers here in Philadelphia's attempt and hope to truly show there is such a strong opportunity in games and that the city and the young talents that are going through universities can look towards careers where they don't have to leave home, right? If they call Philadelphia home or the surrounding areas. Because more often than not, if you want the best results in such a career path, you will be leaving home and or the surrounding areas. So this is our hope to educate, empower, and just welcome more people into what games are, games will be, games can be, and kind of remove the myths and negative connotations towards them. I recently came from a pitch competition, speak to what pitch competition it was, but one of the judges pulled me aside, which was helpful. I appreciated being reminded too, but put me aside to talk to me about how there was looking towards a career and being a gamer and or a creator in games such as like a streamer and stuff and it was like not in my house you have to go to school first etc and I, as a judge i was like oh damn i was up against this already damn okay <laughs> right as a games company but separate from that i was like but you're 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 so wrong um what you should be doing is finding how you can empower that to be what they want to go to the university for right and how they can do that versus you shouldn't be trying to explore that now while you're young with until you go through what the stereotypical journey of going to university is but that recently happened to me i was and it was to me it was like wow there is so much that you know people might just not recognize about games so yeah. hoping this event annually year over year just changes that narrative on top of giving the platform to all of the local companies we have here building amazing games that people just don't know about wait so that was um was that this year 2024 that happened mm -hmm. yep when, when was it it was just it was within this last month wow so we could expect it about this time next year maybe if they decide to do it annually Oh, oh, no, when not was, it's coming, it's September 14th. I thought we were talking about the experience. Oh, the no, no, game the event. Game. Yeah. <laughs> the game yeah. event is September 14th um, next month. Awesome. So we just released 100 more tickets. I think there's about a good 75 left. So anybody, what, when will this drop, actually? When do you need it to drop? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all up to you. I'm following your but If it drops before September 14th, if you have anybody who does want to attend that unfortunately is hearing this late, let me know. I'll make something happen. But yeah, September 14th, expecting the packed house. Awesome. Pretty, I'm excited. 
Well, that would be amazing. You know, it's so back to the, the, the pitch competition. That's crazy because that was a judge that pulled you aside and said that. Yeah, that, yeah, that's why I said, oh, I was already up against this, huh? Got it. It's, it's just crazy because um, I think at times people don't realize how much of their life is actually already gamified. Yeah. And those concepts came from video games overall. Like, it's just some of the websites they use. Um, I mean, even when you think about a social media and on the creator side, of how to gain audience how you know and then the rewards i mean if you could get a payout you know the, to get get money off of it it's very much gamified and then once a month every two months like the head of like i know head of community at instagram he'll do his lives or he'll make his posts about this is what we're paying attention to now and then all the scramblers create like i mean all the, the creators scramble and they're like it's all about reels guys reels hashtags are dead like you know it's just it sucks because it's going to become more so even in healthcare and different ways. And it's just to discourage their kid in that way kind of sucks. Fun. And it's also like, just cause you forbid something, it doesn't make the taste go away. Yeah, they kid just going to go sneak. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, but that was learning. Like for me, the lesson I took from that was I need to, ensure i speak towards it when i am pitching in the sense of those of you who just don't understand why you know your child or young adult might be watching people play hours of games at a time we're here to make sure you know how to take that and turn that into a career for them you know so that's what i got from that so it wasn't it wasn't too negative even though that was the vibe, but yeah, definitely been, think of the perfect person to speak to that talking about like your story. And I hope like people who listen to this hear that, like there's, it's one of those situations where you have a passion, you have a love for something. People are telling you that there's nothing here. And you're like, I promise you there is something here. You go, you find that something. And now you're trying to tell the world about it to make sure that there's a position, a, an opportunity for people who are just like you. You know what I mean? So like the more that you continue to shine and become the person that you wish you had, you're creating that for people who, you know, you're creating that person for somebody who doesn't have it. And, and helping others who love them have more understanding for them. I think all creators, it's, it's crazy because it's like, it doesn't matter if you're like art, an artist or if you're more on a tech side, if you're a creator, people don't get it at first until you get them checks and you start going to the White <laughs> House. Then they like, ooh, I always knew. Ooh. <laughs> um. True. So More what's than that. yeah? So what's like? All right. So we talked about the younger you. Is there software or a tool that's made your life easier? Was Discord? It's what we've managed. To, like we have managed to save from having to pay for Slack because Discord exists and we can utilize it as a team. You know in all the ways we need, as long as we're organized via Google. So this group yeah. has been um, quite a tool that's empowered our ability to be able to make and create together while not being in a physical location collectively. So we were embracing the working from home before working from home started to become the norm. <laughs> um, and to your, the gamified point you made as well, there are now like virtual hubs and software where you can virtually be, you can be in a virtual office and not really be there. Yeah. And in VR, <laughs> even weirder. So there's a lot of, Unique things I'm trying to experiment with, but more often, Discord has definitely been astronomical and a mixture of Discord and Google. Like Sims, but VR. Yeah. Remember the Sims, you go to work and stuff and douche canoe. Yeah. Like, like, what? <laughs> 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 
My son, mm. my son grew up a gamer, and it didn't matter what game, boy. Ooh, but he he was a gamer since he was like a baby, though. Cause my brother is a gamer. My brother used to um, this uh, this is old. This is back v, v, uh, VCRs. My brother used to tape himself playing video games on a VCR. Cause my son was like two and three, and then he'd be like, "I, I want to play." And he's called McGee. He's been Uncle McGee. His name is Malik. He's like, "I want to play." And you know, kids they lose and they cry. So he would record himself playing and then be like, all right, Elo, your turn. And he had a controller and he would think he was playing. And he used to oh, be man. like, look, I'm playing the game. <laughs> so it's like, I've been through those iterations to Sims, to Roblox, to Mine- Minecraft later, Club Penguin. Uh, it's so Club many. Um, Kids, ne- <laughs> Kids Next Door used to have a game. Yeah. On Disney. It was this hamster, this flying hamster game, and you had to keep the oh, hamster man. in the air. Like it was just, boy. I don't think flash player mm-hmm. games get enough credit because flash Yo, player games got us through a long time. Many yeah. clip, many clip. They were really, really good. Like it's just the world of gaming is so vast, and I think, and ooh, parents deep. who just don't get it, it's like, but then what if your kid ends up on a, a team that's making stuff for Disney? Will that make you proud? Like, like you know. It's so very true. And it's like we, games is the youngest of the entertainment sector or one of the youngest. And yet it has grown much bigger than the two combined to date. And for every dollar spent in the box office, that's $6 spent in games now. I, <laughs> the, when the pandemic happened, the games industry, gamification i it's so hard seeing how like people can see all these things happening and still fail to recognize business opportunity in games not just the impact that still left to make but yeah and it's also an industry that needs to just fix a lot of things so too yeah. so and it's, and it's something people could do to also keep their brain sharp, you know, like a lot of different games, even yeah, like, like, how can you, you like hate on gamers with like, if you're playing, what's that word game? But I forget, boy, my memory, I'm getting old. Wordle? You know, talking about Wordle? Wordle, Wordle and things like oh. that, like that's still <laughs> games, you know what I mean? And keeping yeah. your score. My mom plays Candy Crush Type and casual games. boy, she is, Cozy she games. gets, she gets to like thousand. I'm on thou- level thousand something something, and I'm like, how? <laughs> like how? <laughs> but also, you make a good point. I think people who are parents, if your kid has, there's so many parents with the same story. At some point, whether it sometimes more or less, your kid has t- snuck your credit card and put it in, and boy, new levels, new skins, new this, and then you're looking, you're like, what's this on my bill? And then, or you put it through the phone bill. There's unlimited money that you can make in gaming for people to level up, get new anything, suits, Rip. skins, <laughs> drip. Like there, it's just so. It's a lot of money in gaming. Yeah, yeah I mean, so even much money. even um, I mean, you can also do. Y'all could be doing like games that have gambling in it. Now, if y'all did that, <laughs> if you had a game that was kind of hood. And the guys gamble inside the game, and those were like mini games. <laughs> no, for real. Like, did you? Some, like, some... Do y'all remember <laughs> Club Penguin? I think y'all a little older for it, but like in yeah, Club no, Penguin, my son was obsessed. They would get in trouble in school. Like, they, I remember he was in second grade, and then the teacher was like, Oh, they just talk. She said, Pass notes. She said, I was like, <laughs> Give me the note. She said, No, say, like, meet me on Bubblegum Server at seven and Club Penguin. But then they would be there, do community. And then they go into the little things and they play games against each other inside the game. So it's a game in a game. If you did that and it had gaming, like like gambling, and like and, it, and the guys had the opportunity to go to casino. I'm telling you, all the hood we're talking dudes, social impact. All the hood dudes would be all over it. I'm telling you, they'd be That's like, funny. "Oh my god, I forget what it's called." Juvenile. The artist, uh, we had spoken to one of his managers, and they were trying to do. A, I I forget what 
what is that game? It's with dices, I think. Preps. Preps. I'm not, I, I won't even, I don't know, but it was something in that realm, right? Where it was a dice related game that they wanted to make. And yeah, I wasn't sure because I was trying to, I couldn't find the immediate value add, but the Club Penguin, that is so, that reminded me of, now that I can, I can get behind. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can, I and, and, slow down. <laughs> listen, and Club Penguin had some toys in the store. They had some stuff and we bought them. But then it got it, it dripped over into life. It's like he he I remember we went to um Build a Bear and Build a yeah. Bear had a penguin. Oh yeah. So yeah, then yeah. he bought the right. penguin and he named it the same as his character. And all his friends used to talk about like he's like, I got this build a bear and he dressed him in the clothes. I'm telling oh, you, if you, no, I, you I keep uh, and I want to, let me work with Jump Button. I want to make this hood game. I'm telling you. It's a lot of guys that be like, babe. And she be like, no, I'm tired. You can't go to that casino. And he be like, I got something for you. And then he be on the game. <laughs> he be like, I'm in the house. And I, I'm telling you, it just could work. Oh, man. You be keeping brothers deeper. off the street. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh. That's, that is great. Have but to, that remind go on, yeah, no, yeah, go ahead, good. I was trying to that reminded me of something that I'm now not recalling. Oh. I mean it you was, said No, the Club Penguin. I remember you go ahead, boss. I was gonna say, man, I'm I'm dying to know and I don't want any explanation. I just want your list and I don't want any explanation. I wanna know your top three favorite video games. I don't want any explanation. I just want you to to to, to give them to me straight. Pokemon, Mega Man, mm-hmm. and any specific Pac-Man. colors, colors or additions for Pokemon and Mega Man. Mega Man, it has to be the um, what is it called? The one where you run around as the main character and hop into computers on the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I know it's the Battle Network. Yeah, it has okay. to be the Battle Network series. Okay. Nothing else. Um, you might be a better gamer than I. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Mass Effect would be the last one. One, two, or three? One through three. Okay. And then what about Pokemon? What color? Or, I guess, uh, Just the Rangers. The, they're Pokemon oh, Rangers. Okay. Games. I always appreciated... The, that what Pokemon Go did, mm. essentially, but in digital form, and that was the closest I got. Where it felt like I was responsible for the Pokemon versus I was responsible to catch the Pokemon. If that makes sense. Got you. No, it makes sense. Wow. Okay. Damn, I explained. You yeah, sorry. It's, it's, it's good, but I got to listen. I, I need that Rangers explanation because I was a definitely like a le- that's a that's a it's different. I like that. I like that. I like that if a you lot. could, all right. So if you could sit down with any one person anywhere in the world, or anyone in the world for one hour, who would it be and why? Alexis Ohanian. Alexis, I don't. I'm if I pronounce your last name wrong, forgive me. Um, but he's the co-founder of Reddit, and recently founded Seven Seven Six. I. Yeah, he's an individual I definitely want to. I would want to speak to for an hour because he's managed to do some pretty cool stuff and went through a very authentic startup journey just as much as well. Okay. It's it's crazy because it's like I'll see online discourse um, and some people still don't know that he's the founder of reddit they just be like oh yeah he, well, he's married to serena well what else he did and it's like bruh <laughs> he he's somebody he has to him and serena was on a jet date too or whatnot like come on now <laughs> no, it's, i the funny part i didn't know he was married to serena until recently at all i was like oh wow <laughs> yeah two babies that, in there at the point yeah but he's definitely and then he does this a series as well where he paints with cupcakes for his what? daughter. Oh, yeah, that's he, dope. Yeah, I, it's I. I would want to learn that because my daughter would love it. <laughs> but 
he's somebody I would want to talk to for an hour for sure. That's very dope. All right. So we're coming to our key mark question, my friend. And I tried to prep you for it ahead of time, but we are here now. <laughs> so for, for, for Nicodemus, in the place that you are now, we would like to know what does it mean to be a disruptor to you in this space? I recently took a survey by Rec Philly, um, your he uh, hero archetype, and I had gotten the hero, um, hero archetype, and that essentially, if I had to summarize it, was telling me I put or try to put the weight of everything external, and have to remember that in order to accomplish that, I have to make sure I myself am well. And that was a addition, added you know, benefit to what I was discovering about myself as well. But I would have to say for me, being a disruptor is just is that, you know, for guys doing all of the hard things I can do in this lifetime for me to ensure it isn't as hard for the next person for that next whatever you know um and it just so happened games was my format and outlet and how i can accomplish that so that's that's what being a disruptor to, disruptor is to me somebody who has made the journey much less difficult for somebody else within that same path. I like that. Another fun question. If you had to pick an album to describe where you are in your life right now, what would it be and why? I am not a great music listener, but can I pick? Or it could be a song. Yeah, a song, well, two songs. Two songs, All My Life by Lil Durk. Okay. And um, got through it all by Kerr. Or I, I'm saying his name wrong, but K U R. Kerr, yeah. Kerr. Thank you. Okay. I remember I said Kerr one time. I, my, they almost chewed my head off. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> Kerr. That is accurate. Um, Kerr, um, got through it all. Okay. Okay. This is some good, some good one. This is insight. Yeah, that's insight. I like that. Dang. I like that a whole lot. Thanks. All right, man. Well, we have come to the end of our show. And it has been an absolute pleasure, man, speaking with you. I think for me personally, every time we talk to Nicodemus, it's always like little nuggets that I find out about you, like through the stories or like little little things. And I just, it's always a pleasure. Like, I just have to say it for, for, for me personally. It's always a pleasure. Um, and I it's just, opportunity. absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, but please so, let the people know. Oh, yeah. sorry. You, you gonna say no, it to no, me? I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah, where All can right. people keep up with you, find you, and um, yeah, what's the best way for them to follow your journey digitally, like online? IG Ruben.nick, company Jump Button Studio on IG, Jump Button Studio on TikTok, Jump Button with an S, Jump Buttons on Twitter. Yeah, those be the outlets and or Nick at jumpbuttonstudio.com if you are interested in careers in gaming or have questions about PHL gaming. It yeah, will definitely put up the information of how people can attend and get locked into PHL gaming September 14th. And um, man, we, we're really grateful to have you on. I think we're, we're like chomping well. at the bit. We're like, I got some ideas. We're like, hey, we got a, we got a, we got a film. It's a film that will actually it's a series that we probably could use your help on on some consulting. You know that we've already yeah. like did a whole. We'll have a whole pitch ready for. So we're like, hmm. I'm don't worry. Don't, don't worry about the naysayers. We believe in the future of gaming. You were talking, and all of a sudden you just imagine, disappeared. Imagine if that was my exit, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, like, what yeah. just happened? Oh, um, man. Man, I, there was a shortcut key I, I took <laughs> somewhere. Um, but the restaurant, not restaurant business, but fast food, fast food um, chains, 
if any of you listen to this podcast, I'm telling you, if you create a game in which people order by making their own fast food and then they come pick it up and or, you know, your loyalty program is where they run their own fast food chain of your branch, you will probably be more relevant in many coming years. And <laughs> okay. we're happy to make that for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I love because it. I was, I am, I've been like, yo, why? Imagine if you're running your own McDonald's or your own Starbucks, and you, you, if your store's doing good, you can go in and cash that in for discounted uh, drinks and stuff. That'd be dope. Uh, yeah, I'd play, I'd play that just to get my discounted drinks, and now you have that loyal customer. Yeah. But wow. No, and, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. Once it's happening <laughs> at scale, and you got to come to Jump Button Studios to do it. So <laughs> that because he, I'm, I'm look, Nicodemus already has the idea, the concept. I know you like. Look, I, you probably built it already for real, for real. You probably like. I just need to know what logo I'm putting on this. Stop playing with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you know, Nicodemus, we really honored and we really thank you for coming and jumping on the show with us and sharing all your insight and your knowledge and um, hopefully inspiring the, the younger you or the next you, or because somebody has a little brother or sister that really needs to, you know, see your example and hear everything that you have going on and use you as a blueprint. So thanks for coming on, sharing your creative blueprint with us. Um, everyone, make sure you follow and stay in touch with Nick. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. You like this episode? Like it, share it with someone you know needs to hear it, subscribe to our channels, follow our show, and we will promise to keep bringing you amazing, insightful guests like Nicodemus. Thank you so much for having me. Man, thank you for being on. It was a pleasure, man. And until next time, thanks for tuning in to Disruptors in the Culture, everyone. Peace.